Welcome to the Haskell Ring, the series where we solve programming problems, but, you know, in Haskell. All right, it's time for another Haskell Ring episode. People were asking me to try this platform one more time again. I'm not really a big fan of this platform, to be fair. It's extremely slow. The design is cool, I agree on that. The design is cool, but it's extremely slow. And I mean, <sighs> caring about software performance in 2019, am I right? Anyway, so let's take a look at some of the popular cutters. I prepared a couple of solutions for popular cutters. I'm not sure if they're interesting. Uh, you, you see you see the performance of this website. It's, it's just beautiful. Okay, let's just sort by the popular. I, I suppose if they are popular, they are trustworthy, I guess. All right, I think the code the Morse code was actually pretty interesting. In this kata, you have to write a simple Morse code decoder. While the Morse code is now mostly superseded by voice and digital media communication channels, it still has its use in some application around the world. The Morse code encodes every character as a sequence of dots and dashes. For example, the letter A is coded as dot dash, letter Q is coded as dash dash dot dash, and digit 1 is coded as dot dash 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 dash. The Morse code is case insensitive. Traditionally, capital letters are used. When the message is written in Morse code, a single space is used to separate the character codes and three spaces are used to separate words. For example, the message Hey Jude in Morse code is... Oh, read it yourself, I don't care. Note, extra spaces before or after code have no meaning and should be ignored. In addition to letters, digits and some punctuation, there are some special service code. The most notorious of this is the international distress... Like, why do we even read that? Your task is to implement a function that will take the Morse code as input and return a decoded human readable string. For example, you put that in decode Morse and it should return Hey Jude. What's cool about code Morse comparing to HackerRank is that we don't have to deal with standard input and standard output, so they provide us a function, a single function that uh, you just have to implement and they just wrap this function around with their own code and they just test it. No operating system mechanisms like standard input and standard output are involved. What's interesting is that uh, we don't have to come up with the substitution table for Morse code characters ourselves. They provide us that table through this module, so we just import it from here. In the description of the problem, they say that the type of this table is just a standard map from string to string. In Haskell, there is a module for working with associative dictionaries. It's located in data.map. And yeah, I don't know what it uses as a backend. It probably uses some tree or maybe hash table. Uh, probably not a hash table because there is a separate hash map which definitely uses hash table because there is a hash in its name. So the regular map probably uses some kind of a tree. So this particular text editor is not really convenient for me. So I usually prefer to just take this code and copy paste it to Emacs because I mean, Obviously, Emacs is the superior text editor. But unfortunately, inside of Emacs, I don't have this particular table. So for the sake of convenience, for the sake of compilability of my program, I'm going to just go ahead and define it as map from integer to integer. And I'm also going to import map. So for now, it's going to be undefined. And of course, this one is also undefined. So let's first check that this stuff compiles. It does compile so we can finally work with it. So our goal to just implement this function. So the chat says that the implementation of map is based on the size balanced binary tree or trees of bounded balance. So some random stranger said that on the internet. So this must be true. So yeah, thank you. But of course, it's ne it never hurts to Google it yourself. All right, so let's just go ahead and solve it. So let's grab some test data. I think Hey Jude is actually pretty good test data. Uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to just group it by some particular condition. And group by is located in data list. What is the condition that will break sequence of characters into group? The condition is when we are at the boundary between some character that is not space and the one that is space and vice versa. We have to create a function that takes two characters because group by scans the input by pairs and just check that one of them is space and another one is not space. So in, if they belong to different categories, one is space and another one is not space, that means we have to split that specific group. Is space, as far as I know, is located in data character? And boom, as you can see, it actually works. If we use some 
helpers from data function, we would be able to rewrite this entire function like equal on his space. I explained how this function works in one of my previous Haskell rank videos. You can watch that video in the card. So you know that in YouTube, there, there is like a recommendation cards somewhere here. Yeah, um, in the post-production, I'm going to edit there. And yeah, it works. What's interesting is that character separators are single spaces and word separators are triple spaces. The only thing we care about is word separators because without character separators, we can still see the difference between each and individual character because they are elements of the list. So we don't really need character separators, but we do need to keep the word separators because then we'll have to put an actual space there. So the next step is going to be getting getting rid of everything that is a single space. Boom. We got rid of all of the garbage. What's interesting is that the next step would be probably map each individual element of this list to an actual character using the Morse code table. But we cannot easily do that because we have triple space, which is not part of that table. But we're going to do a very interesting trick. What if we take this module and actually import it as qualified? So what's what's the difference between the regular import right and qualified import with the regular import you actually import all of the functions into the namespace of the module but if you do a qualified import you have to provide the prefix so all of the functions that are inside of this module should be prefixed with p so in that case if we want to refer to morse code in this particular module we'll have to refer to it as p morse codes like that that means we can take Take the original Morse code and patch it and add triple space there and actually map it from triple space to a space. So we're going to take the helper that the author of the problem provided to us and we're going to patch it. And that will enable us with a more clean solution because we won't, won't have to think about this special case because that special case is included in the Morse code table because we patched it. And by the way, I just realized that it it's a map from string to string, not integer to integer. I'm so smart. The problem is we cannot easily test it because we don't have such module locally, but we can actually create it. We can create a dummy module that has the same name and we can put uh, whatever we want there locally. And then when we submit our solution, it will use an actual decode Morse preload. So let's actually try to do that. To create such module, we have to actually create the uh, folder structure. Let's do that. I'm going to make dir and just create all of these folders. And then I'm going to go inside of them and open preload module. Inside of that module, I'm going to declare that the name of that module is preload and that I'm going to define a Morse codes function, which has a type map from string to string which is imported from here. And for now, I think we can just leave it empty. We can just leave it empty. I'm pretty sure map provides this particular function. So let's actually try to load it up. So it loads perfectly. We can try to type Morse codes and it's empty, uh, exactly as we would expect. How can we patch the Morse codes from the preload? we can use function insert. But the problem is, is that I don't really like uh, to import uh, individual functions from this module. So I'm going to just go ahead and do another qualified import. And in that case, I'll have to prefix map with M still compiles, which is nice. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to just simply insert triple space as key and single space as value into the Morse codes from the preload. So how we're supposed to use Morse codes? Let's just take our solution. Uh, let's just save it uh, for now. Let's try to play with Morse codes. In Haskell, in data map module, we have a function called lookup. It takes the key, which is, you know, ordered, the map, which is parameterized by the key and the value and returns maybe the value. So it returns maybe because it may fail because a key may not be located inside of the map. So let's try to look up triple space that we just added into the uh, Morse codes and see what we're going to get. Surprisingly, we got nothing, nothing. And this is probably because I forgot to recompile this entire program. Now we got just space. We tried to look up for something else and we got nothing. Nice. I wonder if I can get 
the table from somewhere here. That will be actually super nice. What we can do for now, I think, we can take the values of our input example and we can try to add them to the preloaded Morse code so we have an opportunity to test it somehow. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna just use a little bit of Emacs magic to insert a lot of things into the map. For now, we're gonna just map everything to M. It doesn't really matter what you map it to, so we just need some mapping so our example works with our dummy Morse codes. So we're gonna form a list from them. Okay, and let's try to create a map from it. So we managed to create a map and we should be able to merge it with the original map. As a matter of fact, I think we can just take that map and put it to preload instead of empty. Instead of preloads, it would be also better to use the qualified import. Now we have something in our dummy Morse code and we can try to query all of the values. So this is our current progress. We can try to map it with M lookup, right? The problem with this approach is that M lookup takes the key as the first element. So we cannot just map it like Morse codes because this is supposed to be the second argument of this function. So one of the options we have, we can just try to flip that thing or uh, we can try to use the infix notation. It also works, but I, I think I'm, I can just, uh, I'm just going to flip it. So flip, uh, just for information, it just flips the order of the arguments of the function that it takes. Uh, so what's interesting is that it returns a list of maybes, right? And what's funny specifically here, here we have nothing on this one. I wonder why. So we didn't put it in preloads. Apparently we did not. So I did not separate these two things properly. Okay. So that means I have to quickly fix that. Because all of these things are supposed to be maybes. Okay. After that, we need to concatenate all of these things together. So for that, we can use a sequence operation, which basically takes traversable of monad of A and turns it inside out and makes it a monad of traversable. You don't really have to know what the, all of this means. The only thing you have to know is that list is traversable and maybe is a monad. List fits the definition of traversable, maybe fits the definition of a monad. That means we can take our list of maybes and turn it inside out, just like that. So now we have a maybe of list instead of list of maybes. So you don't have to know what all of these interfaces mean or type classes as we call them in Haskell community. You only have to know that list is traversable and maybe is monad. That means you can use this function to turn them inside out. Isn't it great? So what that enables us with? That enables us with actually going further and concatenating everything that is inside of maybe. To do that, we're going to use an operation called fmap which takes a function from A to B, some functor, you see F is a functor, some functor that contains A, exactly the argument this function takes and returns the functor of B. It's sort of needed to penetrate the functor. And the only thing you have to know is that maybe is a functor. So maybe is monad, it's also functor. And fmap allows you to penetrate functor. So what that means, imagine that you have maybe with five and you can increment that five without unwrapping the maybe. You can just sort of inject that function right into the maybe without unwrapping it. So what we can do, we can take our current solution and inject a concat function into it and actually concatenate everything. How about that? Isn't it cool? I think it's pretty cool. Uh, on top of that, uh, we just need to unwrap maybe. We can use from maybe. If I'm not mistaken, this function is located in data maybe. And it takes the default value that you have to provide. And it will just unwrap the maybe if it's going to be nothing it will return an empty string. So this is the implementation of the decode Morse function. So what we have to do, we have to just copy paste this thing here. And since it's a single uh, functional composition, single long function composition, what we can do, we can turn it into point free notation, basically turn it into actual composition of function. And let's try to format it. So it looks a little bit more nice. Let's double check that it compiles and we can try to submit all of that goodness and see if we are actually right 
or not. All right, so let's just copy paste it here and let's just run the sample test. Hopefully they will pass, I don't know, I'm so nervous. Okay, they pass and let's attempt that thing. Nice. I'm a professional software developer. Uh, so I think I forgot one simple note. Extra spaces before or after the code have no meaning and should be ignored. So what we can do, we can simply trim the input. We can uh, remove the spaces before and after the string. So uh, it would be nice to have some kind of a function called trim, which takes strings and returns the string, which does that. And we could just put it here somehow. The question is, how would we implement such a function? I was thinking how to better implement that, but since I'm pretty sure how long is the input? Is the input super long? If it's not super long, we can implement it in a pretty cheesy way. We can drop while spaces, so it will drop all of the spaces in the prefix. Then we can reverse the string and drop all of the spaces again, and then reverse it back. <laughs> You're welcome. I, I hope le you learned Haskell well from my videos. So let's try to submit that one more time. Yay!